Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, it's The Eradicator, and today, well, it is Thursday here in 10.1, we've got a lot of news, we've got a roadmap update, we've got a reason why we haven't any patch for the PTU and an Anvil Liberator Q&A. Here we go, let's get started first with the roadmap roundup, and this one is not a really big one, but it does look like the Origin X1 is coming up in the roadmap, which I think is great news. Now, for those who don't know, the, the Origin X1 is the kind of Hoover bike that we are going to get from Origin, kind of like the competitor to the Dragonfly, but it's going to be luxurious and it's going to be looking uh, pretty good. And, well, there is also a dedicated bay for the Origin X1 in the 400i, which is why it does make sense that the, the team at CIG are going to start working on it, simply because people are going to be flying the X, the 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 400i and there's going to be a demand for that next one now according to the roadmap it does look like work is going to be completed by the end of q2 2022 so we should expect to see this one for star citizen of a 3.8 uh, if I am correct, or maybe a little bit later if uh, they need extra time. But I mean, it's a small vehicle, so it shouldn't be taking that much long in order to be completed, right? Uh, the 400i is now into the game, at least in the PTU, and so it is now a committed item on the roadmap. Next is Rastar. Now, Rastar is a new tool that CIG are developing here, and this is going to allow the placement of modular structures on planet surfaces, including the deformation of the surrounding area, so lots of uh, actually uh, terraformation here, it looks like, right, of the surrounding area to accommodate the facilities. This will eventually be used by players to place their own structures, such as, for example, the Consolidated Outland Pioneer, which is going to be the base building ship in uh, in Star Citizen, right? And so if we have a look at uh, if we have a look at the roadmap, it looks like Rastar is going to be, at least the work has started a while back, it seems like this one was actually unannounced, but now it's not unannounced anymore, and uh, it looks like the work is going to be completed by the end of Q1 2022. Now, this does not indicate that we'll have base building by then, this does not indicate that the Pioneer will be released by then, but at least uh, they've been uh, working, look at that, 65 weeks, that is really a long time to develop up uh, this um, it's, it's 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 like over a year right uh, it's a very long time to develop this uh, this program but at least you know, then after that they're going to tweak it make it user friendly so that players will be able to use them once we finally get the pioneer in our hands now unfortunately those of you who love alien ships are going to see that the Aupoa Sentok Yai is unfortunately not in the roadmap anymore. They say that the timing of the development of this ship is currently under re-evaluation. Therefore, it is being removed from the progress tracker until it is complete. And I'm afraid that we're not going to see a lot of GN ships for a long time. Uh, this also includes the Raylan, which is that GN cargo ship. Uh, I mean, it's a very fancy... I mean, those GN ships look very fancy, but uh, definitely not a priority for CIG. There is also something that was delayed of Star Citizen of 3115, and that is the Shop and Patreons. And they say that uh, after its review and extensive tasting, the team has made the decision to grant this feature additional time for polish. For this reason, this card has been relocated to 3.16, sorry, the Austin, <laughs> Austin 316 column in Q4. So that's it for the roadmap update. Next, what is going on with Star Citizen patches? Well, we may have also a little bit of news since there was a, uh, uh, a question that was asked. And here they say, um, uh, the question was, is the heartbeat crash recovery stuff part of the issue? I can only imagine how complicated a system uh, that is to implement. And the answer is that uh, I can say that it has uh, some issues that are being uh, fixed up before it goes out. They also say that there is no point in patching if we don't uh, move the needle very far. 
and we are waiting for some inventory improvements to finish out before a refresh. We can see the crash data and stability overall isn't awful relative to PTU. Uh, stability is not so great right now in the PTU with a lot of crashes to desktop and a lot of 30k errors. So the heartbeat crash recovery uh, thing here is really something that we could be, uh, <laughs> that, that, that would be a very welcome addition to the PTU, right? But I understand that they are waiting for a significant patch and they don't want to be wasting their time until this next implementation is coming and it's probably going to be causing a lot of maybe 30ks or crashes or a lot of issues so that's why they are taking their time i can totally understand that and the inventory system uh, does have issues for example i have noticed that my items uh, disappear from my inventory uh, uh, out of random times or it's really difficult to split items you try to split them but then they come back together right so um, there are some issues indeed and if they're taking their time uh, then i'm supposed that uh, they will have also more time to fix those issues so i see that as a positive thing Next, the Anvil Liberator q and I know that a lot of you guys are not really interested in the Liberator because it's another concept ship. It will take a long time, several years to be in the PDA. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, what has been dreaming us, uh, dri driving us in Star Citizen is, you know, this this whole ability to dream of the, the, the future, what is going to happen, and, and, and seeing that dream slowly but surely becoming a reality and um, yeah people have been asking for a pocket carrier for a very long time and that's basically what the anvil liberator is and uh, some really great questions were asked here in that Q&A for example what sort of capabilities would the ship have for refueling repairing and rearming and here they say that the liberator will only support basic levels of refueling rearming and repairing and this will have to be done manually which I think is fantastic now how is this going to be done obviously this shows that the liberator will not come for a very long time because uh, they are going to they are going to have to design uh, game mechanics that will allow players to manually repair ships. So I'm going to have a, a repair beam, like in in for example X4, right? I mean, why not? At, at this point, we have a, uh, a mining beam, a healing beam. We're going to have a salvage beam, probably. So why not a repair beam, right? <laughs> I know that people are going to hate that, but you know, it is what it is. It's a video game. Next, are the ships on the deck shielded by the Liberator size 3 shields? And apparently, uh, they only cover a few meters, but if the ship is too high, then it's not going to be entirely covered. So, for example, if you have the brilliant idea of putting a Redeemer on top of the ship, or maybe a Staffer or a Gemini, right? Well, uh, the top of the ship is probably not going to be shielded, so you're probably going to have to power on your own ship while it is landed on the Liberator. And if you want to be using that ship uh, to give the Liberator extra turret, right? To give extra uh, space and turn it into a, a full-fledged capital ship, which I think it does have some potential indeed right uh, you're gonna have to power on your ship as well uh, next what is the largest ship that can be parked in each of the garages the upper landing pads and the front landing pads so here they said that the garages in front landing pads can store uh, ground vehicles as well as the such as for example the tumbrel nova and the anvil ballista so the c2 is not going to be the only ship that will be able to carry those vehicles the liberator will be able to do that but as well as some smaller ships like uh, the origin 85x the cargo uh, mpuv the argo mpuv UV, right but i would not be surprised if it can also accommodate the merlin or the archimedes right whereas the top is more for smaller vehicles like the hornet the hour which has sh sh these ships are not really that great when it comes to traveling long distances so it definitely makes sense that these are going to be accommodated by the liberator i can absolutely uh, i can absolutely uh, imagine that uh and i will not go over all the questions guys i'll put the link in the description down below if you want to see uh, the q a but some of the uh, i'll go over some of the uh, very interesting uh, answers here. So they did confirm that the 400 SU of cargo capacity is separate from the pads, right? So the ship re will have internal cargo bays that are going to be secure for cargoes and they will not be uh, hindered by any vehicles that will be able to go inside. I think that is also great news. 
there is another uh, ship here. Uh, there's another uh, piece of information here that I'd like to talk about, and that is going to be jump point. Because, you know, a lot of people are concerned that maybe landing a ship on top of another ship will not make it entirely stable. I think that the labor is really going to be designed from the get go to to stabilize ships that are going to be landing on top of it, so, which is why uh, it is also going to allow for uh, for ships that will be landed on top of its decks to also travel through jump points with it that's the whole point of the liberator and i'm glad that this was actually uh, confirmed that there's a question here will there be any consideration to re removing the spawning ship requirements when loading your own fleet for example when we spawn the third vehicle the first vehicle would be would spawn and despawn and they said that yes the current limitation are therefore temporary measures because people were asking uh, that to wrap Anyway, uh, there's another one here. What are the two cylinders on each of the lateral engines here? They said that they do not have uh, function. People were asking, right? They, they kind of look uh, very, uh, very badass. And it were these uh, huge uh, torpedoes or bombs. But actually, they're just here uh, for the style, right? Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. And uh, again, a big shout out to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon and by the John Better membership. You guys are awesome. Thank you to Eric Ohm and uh, as well Dr. Frobin, who is uh, sponsoring a giveaway again, right? On Discord, we have this Cutlass Black with the green coolish paint. Thank you so much. Also, here's my giveaway question, guys. Um, what do you think of the Liberator? Are you interested in the Liberator? Is this a ship that you have uh, purchased for yourself? I'd like to know. Uh, if you answer this question and subscribe to this channel, you can also get a Cutlass Red. I'll be drawing that at the end of the month. See you guys tomorrow for more content on the channel. This is the Eradicator. I'll see you guys later. A huge shout out to everyone who's been helping me out on Patreon and via the YouTube Joint Membership Program. Creating content on YouTube involves continuous circles of ups and downs, and it is when we are the lower parts of the curve that your help really motivates me to keep on going. Your contribution really does make a difference, which is why in return I try to give back by offering backers access to my private Discord channel, automatic access to exclusive giveaways, or answering your questions during the show. You can help me out with as little as a dollar a month, and any help is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching again. This is the Eradicator. I'll see you guys later.